Hey Cameron, suffice to say, you nailed the calendar. The mixture of words, both Spanish and English, Arabic numerals, Roman numerals, and tally marks makes for an exceptionally easy to read calendar. Bravo! Also, April has 30 days. And we're not doing with our flower pot story, but I don't have time to add anything to it today because I've been tasked with providing rattlesnake facts. No, this is not a rattlesnake. This is a boa constrictor, but uh, you get the point. But enough playtime. Let's talk about actual rattlesnakes. So rattlesnakes are a type of pit viper separated into two different genera, both of which exist in the Americas. The first genus, Cistruus, Latin is not one of my area of expertise, so I probably pronounced that wrong, contains three different species. The pygmy rattlesnake, which judging by its name, you could probably guess is small, but also native to Georgia. And the eastern and western Massasuga rattlesnakes, helpfully located in the eastern and western parts of North America, respectively. Bites from these should still be treated by a medical professional, but because they don't deliver a large amount of venom and their venom isn't particularly potent, it's not generally as dangerous as the rattlesnakes in the other genus. The Crota! <laughs> Again, not a rattlesnake. This is a hog nose. It's very cute and it's got a derpy little face, but people mistake these guys for rattlesnakes in the wild. Now this genus contains all the other species of rattlesnakes. There's quite a few, like 30, 40, something like that. I'm not going to show them all because there's a lot, but I will give you a few examples. Like the eastern black-tailed rattlesnake and rock rattlesnake are both gorgeous, but so are these two that are both native to your current state of Georgia, the timber rattlesnake, and my personal favorite, the largest rattlesnake of them all, the eastern diamond back rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes are pit vipers, meaning they've got two l'oreal heat organs in the front of their face or heat pits that enables them to be able to pick up and see the radiation that's coming off of their prey. Basically, they can see heat. And they have hinged fangs, which enables them to be able to fold their fangs up into their mouth and then extend them out when they're ready to bite something. So they can have longer fangs than like fixed fang snakes. Now, all rattlesnakes have a hemotoxic venom, but a few species like the tiger rattlesnake, the a few of the Mojave species, the timber rattlesnake, also have a neurotoxic venom. Basically, with some of these snakes having two different types of venom, it gives them a nice little, like, toxic venom cocktail of doom. Now, assuming your movie is going to take place in Georgia, it's going to be either an eastern diamondback or a pygmy, both hemotoxic venom, or a timber, which has both hemotoxic and neurotoxic. But one second, I'll be right back. I've got to go ship a snake. All right, I'm back. So what's the difference? So a hemotoxic venom is going to attack tissue and, like, prevent blood clotting. So it results in tissue damage, whereas a neurotoxic venom attacks the central nervous system, so it tends to result in, like, organ paralysis, and stuff like that. Basically, a neurotoxic venom is more likely to kill you, but if you don't die, you'll probably keep all of your fingers, whereas a hemotoxic venom is less likely to kill you, but your risk of amputation increases. Please note, though, both can kill you, so if you do get bitten, please seek medical attention. Mortality rate for the species in your state of Georgia is somewhere between, like, 10 to 30 percent if left untreated, but if you get it treated quickly at the hospital, it drops to damn near zero. As far as snake venoms go, they aren't horrible, with you usually having a few days before your ultimate demise, if demise does come, but there are a number of factors that could lead to that happening sooner, so don't roll the dice, get to the hospital quickly. When you get to the hospital, they're going to evaluate you and most likely give you an antivenin called Crofab, and then they're going to keep you from monitoring to make sure that your condition doesn't worse, you don't need more antivenin, you don't have allergic reaction, all that type of stuff. It's also a good idea to follow the National Snakebite Support Group on Facebook. They've got a lot of doctors in there that specialize in working with snakebite victims and can give you a lot of good information, how to seek care, and they can even provide like guidance for you to give to your ER doctor if they're not super comfortable with treating snake bite victims. Oh, and another fun fact, rattlesnakes, they give live birth, they don't lay eggs. And that rattle that you were asking about, you were asking me to kind of describe what I thought the sound sounded like, and I think it sounds like a bunch of cicadas stuck in a pile of leaves. Now the snake's rattle is made up of a bunch of different segments of keratin, which is the same stuff your hair and nails is made out of. And they're basically hard, and when they shake their tail, they can shake it up to 50 times a second, and it makes all of those little keratin sections uh, rub together, and that is what makes that rattle sound. And they use it primarily to try to scare off predators, which goes to show you that they really don't want to bite. They literally have an alarm system built in to be like, hey, you're scaring me, please back away before I bite. Anyway, I can go on for days with rattlesnake facts, but I think I at least answered your primary questions that you were asking. Hope the movie's good.